Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you can see the screen and hear my voice, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, today's tutorial would be on optimization. So mainly we're gonna see the concept behind cost optimization. There are gonna be a lot of mathematical uh, talks. So I hope it's your favorite subject. So let's go to the definition first, what it means optimization uh, in the context of data science and machine learning data. So we're gonna focus on these particular areas. What is the purpose of optimization? So it's generally refers to the process of finding the best parameters uh, or configurations for a model or algorithm to achieve the desired outcome. So let's say if we take for machine learning, if we have a model, a model has a parameter, right? So optimi what optimization does is it adjusts manipulate those parameters to get the, re the required output to that model. So if we want that model to have a high accuracy, what behind all those models that we know right now is mathematical operations are behind the scenes that are mathematical operations. So that, those mathematical operations actually give us the best result is through this optimization concept. So those parameters will go through this adjustment, manipulation of data, manipulation of those variables parameters until we find the desired outcome. So before modeling uh, this generative AI, AI models become this popular right now, AI is right popular. The concept doesn't came three, four years ago when AI become really popular. Actually, this model exists 10, 20 years ago. There are not new concepts, but those models were not predicting or doing job as they should in the area of machine learning data science like they are right now. So what, ha what happened before the first time they were drived these mathematical equations in right now, when they are right now working as they should, is the these scientists, mathematicians were doing well. They were trying to improve those models that existed before decades ago by improving their by adjusting manipulating those parameters they were working really hard until this kind of output that we see in the area of air happens on the in these models so they were doing a lot of optimization on these algorithms on these mathematical operations until these models actually start doing the job that they want the desired outcome the, the, they said for that particular function or algorithm. So optimization, the concept of optimization is that manipulating, adjusting those parameters that we have in these mathematical equations until we can get to the desired outcome. So this is what optimization is. So if you hear, when you read uh, or anything about uh, research on optimization, you'll hear, you'll hear these two terms being used, optimization problem and optimization process. What, what does it mean? Let's just say, so an optimization problem, it, it is referred to the mathematical representation of a specific task or a problem that we want to optimize. So let's say that we have a function, a mathematical function, we are expecting from that function to get a high result. Let's say the right now the function is giving whatever variable we are changing, it's giving uh, the value 10 at the end, but we want we want it to give five instead of 10. So we have a problem. We, 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 what kind of problem we have? We have an optimization problem that give, keep giving us a maximum number 10. Instead, we want a minimum number of five from the function. So this is a problem that happens because of the parameter values that 10 or five values uh, will be output. We will adjust those parameters that we have, whatever equation that we are trying to solve. So we will call this one when we are not getting the particular desired outcome from the function. We will say we have an optimization problem and we have to solve it to get the desired outcome. Either we want a maximum value from that algorithm function or we want a minimum value. So we will refer that kind of issues as an optimization problem. The optimization process is what comes next. So once we define what we want from the function, the optimization process will happen. That is manipulating those variables, 
those when I say parameters variables, they are the same term. Adjust those variables until we get the result. Uh, that is, if in this example that I just gave you, I want a minimum value of five, not ten. So I'm looking for a minimum desired outcome from my objective function with the mathematical equation. So while satisfying constraints, what are constraints? We'll see them later. But the point is the process of making sure uh, we are getting the desired outcome. We will say it when as a term. That is optimization process. In the problem we need is in an algorithm or function or module, we will say it due to I uh, will say it, an optimization problem. So in summary, optimization problem is a formal mathematical representation of the task or program that we want to solve. And the optimization process is the process of finding the best solution for that problem, to that problem. So what are the key aspects in optimization? The first one is objective function. That is a function we have. So there is a function, a mathematical operation in every model, like we said. So there's that function that is doing something that's giving some output. And that function, we will say it uh, in mathematical terms, the objective function. So the objective function is a mathematical expression that quantifies the performance or quality of a module. So depending on that objective function output, we will say this model is had this quality or this performance or this problem. That the whole general main part of uh, main part that defined what your model performance or your data science algorithm, whatever, is the objective function. So this is typically a function that you want to minimize or maximize. For example, if you are looking from your function, your algorithm, to do a loss function or to minimize an error, then you want a minimize value, right? Error, loss, uh, this kind of terms, you want reduction in them to make the model perform well or whatever the purpose is. So we are looking for a minimized value. But when you want accuracy to be higher, then you are wanting a maximum value. So this uh, typically a function, that function that you want, you decided this function, I want it to be this, I want it to be this for the model or the algorithm to perform well. That we will define it as an objective function in mathematical terms. And the, part, uh, the parameters or decision variables are the variables that, is that the question? Uh, yes. Okay. Go ahead, you can ask. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how, how do we uh, pick the variables that gives us or that optimizes it? For example, to increase accuracy and uh, minimize the error. Like, how do we pick the variables or the features? Okay, so uh, let's finish the tutorial because it will answer all those questions. Okay, okay. Uh, right now, just uh, see the concepts, the mathematical term, because I will show an example later. So when I say an objective function, parameter, decision variables, I don't want you guys to be new to it, because this is the concept behind these values, these uh, terms that I keep mentioning. So the parameter decision var variables are the adjustable variables or setting of a model. So they all algorithms that can be tuned to improve the objective function. So these variables, are the one that we will going to adjust to improve those objective function based on our requirement. This can include model coefficient, hyperparameter, or other settings. So if we take a model, we know a model has parameter. You have experience that during your fine tuning, uh, behind those models is what happens is a mathematical operation, right? And those parameters are adjustable. They, you can actually adjust them to get to test your model, how it performs. So you will, uh, depending on your use case, you might put a constraint on those parameters. For example, let's see this example. Let's just finish this term again. When we say constraints, constraints are the limitation or restriction that you put on your parameter. So for example, if I want the parameter to be uh, adjust between, to be picked from one and two, or maybe from minus two to two, 
in the integer line from minus 2 and 2, I give it a constraint. This parameter, whatever the value that is going to be changed, it needs to be in the range between minus 2 and 2. It could be any number, but it cannot pass minus 2 and 2. So this means I give it a constraint for that parameter. So the optimization process, if you have given a constraint for, constraint for your variables, for your objective function, the optimization algorithm that you're going to implement has to respect those restrictions. It has to solve the problem within that constraints. So for example, in logistic uh, regression model, it's a supervised machine learning model where classification is made. Either you will decide this data is on this category or not. That is logistic regression model overview, that's the definition. So in logistic regression model, there's actually coefficients that exist in the model that are restricted in a range. Those range will help the logistic model to be stable and interpretable. So those uh, constraints that you give for your parameters or for the model itself, for I mean for the objective function itself, depends on your case and your requirement. Optimization algorithm, it is the process that we have been talking about. It is a method to find the best output, um, the best parameter, the best optimal value that minimize or maximize of the objective function. This objective function output, we, we the developers or the users, that, not the users, but we the ones who are doing this algorithm are the ones that we decide what the objective function should be while satisfying the constraints. So this is the process of optimization. It makes sure what is the best value for that parameter should be for that desired outcome of the objective function while satisfying the constraint. We, this we will call the, the optimization algorithm. So there, there are a lot of optimization algorithms that exist right now. And whatever the type of optimization algorithm that you use, whatever tool that you use to do optimization, it might have some difference in some aspects, but in general, this is what they do. When they, if they actually are tool that do optimization, this is a main part that they do. They find try to find a parameter, the best parameter for that objective within that constraint. So this is the concept. Whatever the tool is, the concept is the same. They have just, just uh, some uh, small differences how they operate their algorithm. So let's go to the types of optimization problem that can uh, occur. So these types are classified depending on the objective function, the constraint, and the decision variables. This is how it's, the classification happens. What are the type of objective, constraint, decision variable? Decide this classification, we will see in detail. We have five, then linear, nonlinear, integer programming, Mixed integer linear, mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. So we will see them in detail and their differences. So all of them are mathematical term again. So on, let's start from the linear part. So linear programming uses many linear inequalities. So if you are familiar with mathematics, linear and nonlinear are common words in mathematics. Linear is a simple function that doesn't have a complex functionality when you do something. For example, this one. For example, x plus by is equal to z. This is a linear representation in mathematics. But if you include quadratic function where there is exponential representation, x square or square root, that would be an nonlinear functionality, a uh, nonlinear equation. So that is the difference between linear in mathematics. Linear are a simple uh, summation of variables to give an output, but with nonlinear, the function would be complex. There would be square roots, there would be exponential representations. Uh, a lot of this mathematical equation, uh, functional calculation would happen on that equation. When it's complex, it will be nonlinear. So if it's not linear, it would be nonlinear. It's just a mathematical term for the equations. So if it's a linear programming problem, your objective function will have a linear representation of mathematics, which is a weight 
some summation of the decision variables like ax plus by give this one it's a summation of this decision variables or parameters this has a linear representation the constraint if we are implementing a linear programming problem the constraint that you give will have a structure of linear representation you can define it by either inequalities or equalities that is greater than or less than equals to or equals to so you can define i want this kind of uh, this linear quadrat this function not to be greater than this value or to be less than this value or equal to this value so you you will you the constraints are given with this form the decision variable that the parameters are continuous when we say continuous in mathematics it means uh, it could it take any real value so a real value in mathematics is any value right it could include negative number positive number zero fraction value so it could be any real value the distribution value it could be, you can put a decimal value a fraction value whatever you want so continuous it's continuous type for linear programming the distribution value you have to take uh, for example let's say there's a company the company objective function or the company's objective is to to get a maximum profit but they have limitations that you have to respect you have to consider when you come up with the optimal value they need to have to get the maximum profit they have resource constraints so if you have a money budget or other supplies that they have you have to consider those constraints when you say if you if you if you improve this one you will get a maximum profit you have to consider this constraint that production company has so this kind of uh, examples can be considered as a linear program as a linear programming problem. So uh, again, this is a definition of linear programming. It has the same concept as optimal. It's getting the right optimal value under those conditions, under those constraints. Uh, a classic example for linear is calculating the optimal production levels to maximize a profit given the restriction of supplies in personas could be other restriction the production company has so uh, at the end of the day it's about getting the optimal value to meet that final target so the linear is this objective function has to be a linear is a linear representation function Construct is the linear, which can be indicated with equalities or inequalities. The decision variables are continuous. So if we see this uh, calculation, ax plus by is z. So this is the objective function. I'm expecting either a minimize value or a maximize uh, value. So this we are considering a production company for this example. So uh, which means I'm expecting an objective function to acquire a maximum profit, right? So my objective function is uh, expecting a desired term that indicate maximization. Uh, so if I have ax plus by, x and y are my decision variables. They can I can uh, adjust the manipulate them with a lot of different numbers. If we have constraints with this, A and B are coefficients. These are values that go that not going to be changed. So, for example, in this week project, if we see the driver location, uh, their home location, their depot location, those are fixed values, right? That's actually where the location exists. So they are, they are considered as a coefficient, they are fixed values. So whatever the use case is, there are coefficient values that will not be changed and you have these parameters that you can adjust to get the, result, the desired result so in this particular example x and y are the desired parameters in a in per coefficient constant values so without changing the constant values but by changing these decision variables we, we are looking for to meeting the maximized objective function so we have restrictions one restriction is the x and y value that we going to adjust should not be greater than zero which means they have to be positive numbers and other there's other restrictions uh, constraints that is cx plus dy has to be less than or equals to e and other linear functionalities that indicate it has to be less than or equals to 
H. So this indicates there's a limited resource the, the production company have. For example, for the first one, let's say, uh, it could represent the country that the total usage of resource represent by the total usage of resource. It's a known value by the company. It's represented by CMD, it's a coefficient, must be less than or equal to the available amount. So it must be not greater than the available amount the company production the, the production company has. This could be one constraint. The other constraint could be the constraint that the total production represented by F and G must be less than or equal to the, ma the maximum demand. So you have a maximum demand value and you don't want uh, to be greater than that. It has to be less than the maximum demand. So, so this is one constraint that we have to consider when we do optimization to acquire the desired output to maximize, in this case, the maximum profit. So I hope this clear, uh, clear things up. So this is how you should think when you think about optimization. So what optimization uh, constraint that, that, that do I have? Which are my constant values and which are the values that I can adjust, manipulate to get my desired outcome. So this is a mathematical example for linear programming or even optimization in general. Now, when we go to nonlinear programming, again, the concept is the same, how optimization works. The difference is the optimization function is not linear, but nonlinear. It's not a simple sum of weighted, uh, sum of weighted decision variables. It can be complex. Like I told you, there's a lot of mathematical factors that happen, the square roots. A lot of things happen in nonlinear quadratic functions. Even they can be complete than that. So if it's not linear, it's non-linear, like I said. So the objective function is has a non-linear representation. The constraint is non-linear, again, with inequality, inequality representation. The decision variable is continuous. It can be any real value. Uh, for example, uh, that uh, a case that we consider to be solved by non-linear optimization is a design of structural system. So our objective function is to minimize the weight of that design. So when we go through uh, optimization to get the minimized weight, we have to consider satisfy the stress limit that's going to be given and the deflection limit as a constraint. So this structural system has a, a lot of mathematical operation behind it. So that's why it's under the linear optimization. Uh, this is how we, the, again, the process is the same. It's just these nonlinear problems are more complex and hard to solve than the, the linear one. This requires a lot of thinking and mathematical operation to get your optimal value to improve your whatever you're doing, your model, your algorithm. So, in nonlinear mathematical representations, there are concepts. Convex and non convex. So, convex and non convex these are mathematical terms that happen when you calculate in a linear function. So, if convex uh, happens on your mathematical equation, what does this mean? It means your objective function in control are convex. If uh, we will see this one also with a graph later. Let's just know uh, in nonlinear representation of mathematical operations, convex type of mathematical uh, information you will get in non convex type of mathematical information, you will get these two. Again, we'll decide the optimal value to improve either to minimize or maximize whatever your desired outcome is. So, uh, like algorithms like gradient based meters are considered convex nonlinear program. Uh, problems and uh, convex are the opposite, uh, not the opposite, but uh, not actually opposite. It's not, they are not opposed to each other. It's just a term that we use for different information. And they have this when you, when your nonlinear pro problem, when you, uh, you, when your calculation at the end become a convex, you will have, you likely have one 
optimal value to solve to acquire your objective at the end one and that one optimal value we will uh, we will say it a global optimum so we find this global optimum using this calculation to solve to acquire our desired objective but when you you are linear non-linear convex there's to to the non-convex representation it means that multiple local may exist again one might exist but there's a chance multiple optimal value exists which means those multiple optimal uh, values can give you a better output or can lead you to meet your function objective but the one value from all of those multiple optimal values one of them gives you the better outcome and you will name that one the global optimum so the global optimum is the final optimum that gives you the desired output so in a convex mathematical operation it this these two classification happens depending on how complex your nonlinear equation is they happen in those two ways so either you will get a lot of local optimum and from all those local optimum one of them can give you a better result they all give you a good result but one of them will be, have a great effect on the objective outcome but in convex annulities you only have one you're likely to have one optimal value and the optimal value is the global one that is the one that give you uh, this classification happen depending on the nonlinear equation complexity so when we go to the integer programming again the same concept of the optimization is similar the difference is the objective function there's an integer linear programming in integer nonlinear programming so the only difference is the decision variable has we have seen before it is continuous 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 right but in integer programming the decision variable actually has to be a whole number that is an integer value the fractional numbers negative numbers are not allowed positive integer values are the one that you can put on your parameters uh, by putting different values until you get your desired result that is the difference other than that the objective can be linear on the linear format the constraint can be linear or linear with equality in qualities. For example, another for integer programming optimizes the allocation of facilities in a supply chain network with this discrete decision variable. So it depends on your objective, on your use case. So this is what we talked about. So the integer would be linear integer programming optimization in linear object, uh, integer programming. So Linear one is you have a linear representation, and then a linear one you have a linear representation of equation. So that's the only difference in your decision parameters. You only have the options to pass only an integer value. Mixed integer linear, again, it combines the integer, the linear concepts here. The only thing that makes it mixed is the decision variables sometimes can be continuous and some of them can be integer valued. So you have the, the parameter you put could be continuous or it can be both the mixture of both value representations. Other than that, we are seeing the linear part. So the objective is the constraint has to be linear. For example, here, when you optimize the production schedule with both continuous in discrete values for example that uh, for production quantities you can have a continuous representation for discrete like machine assignments can have a, an integer value representation so this depends on the use case really but uh, we will name it if that model or the will end up using both in continuous and discrete integer for linear functionality we will say it it's a mixed linear programming optimization of problem characteristic combines the feature of both linear programming into programming uh, algorithms like branch and uh, branch and bound are uh, used to solve mixed in linear programming problems this i think is also shared on your on the document and the mixed linear is opposite of that one we see the linear one and this one is for the linear one the same concept otherwise. 
So when we summarize what we talked about so far, all machine algorithms can be viewed as a solution to optimization problem. And they are. This, all these machine learning algorithms that we know so far in this modeling part, they have gone through a lot of optimization problem to be where they are right now. And they can also be to do, uh, they are also, of course, going to go to other optimization processes to improve their performance much better. So all these algorithms that we know have are uh, our solution to some optimization problem that happened prior to the start that they have been right now. So understanding optimization needs to more deeply understand the working of machine learning algorithm, rationalize when you understand optimization, it can help you to break down how that actual, uh, uh, algorithm of that model is actually working. You, it will give you uh, that understanding to, to rationalize the working of that algorithm. Uh, even better, when you are really mastered on this particular area, when you understand all the mathematics behind it, you will be on that pos uh, position where you are uh, creative enough to build your own, to come up with your own uh, new algorithm that solves something. So just notes from all the things that we have talked about. I have mentioned linear and nonlinear words, right? Just to show you, uh -huh. linear are this kind of mathematical representation where there is no much uh, complex mathematics happen. There are parameters in their summation and they give output. This kind of representation, we will name them in mathematics linear. And this kind of quadr exponential involvement, if you can see this exponential involvement, this qu quadratic function like representation, we will uh, name, name them as nonlinear expression. Okay, I have mentioned convex and non-convex as well, right? Because so convex problems have only one local optimum point, which is a global optimum point, where this point is the best parameter value that gives you the best output or the desired outcome. So the local optimum also is the global optimum since we only have one, the, the only one that gives the desired output the point is either minimum or maximum, depending on your need. Uh, if the second order de derivative is positive, the point is maximum, minimum. The second order, third order, higher order, these are also mathematic uh, terms to indicate complex functions. So if the, those functionalities output become positive, you have a point that is positive point, or it could be a negative point if it come up negative and that will be the minimum the point is maximum and non-convex is again similar concept but in non-convex you have multiple local points the local optimum point may not necessarily be the global optimum it could be but it might not be but that one that could be that is the right one to solve that to come up with the desired outcome become the global optimum point the same concept here uh, just to see the convex with graph let's say your mathematical operation when you plot it it come up like this and like this so this is an indication of convex equation so we only have one uh, optimal point so let's say I'm, I'm needing a minimizer function so i'm wanting the minimal value so let's say this particular point that is the minimum in this graph is the one that gives me the desired output. This is my optimal value for getting my desired output. And we will indicate this one as a convex. It's only have one into a point and it becomes the global optimum. Uh, sometimes, depending on the what equation that you have, you can have this kind of graphs. So these are optimum points, minimum optimum points. Uh, this graph can continue again, uh, continue to like this, and you can have multiple optimum points, but not all those optimum points are the same similar value. They are different numbers, and they can affect your model or your algorithm differently. And the one that 
is affecting the model as you wanted become the global optimum point. So this kind of representation happen in convex, non-convex, and this one in convex, this one. So, so the key distinction here is that the global optimum is the absolute best solution for solving the problem, while the local optimum is the only, was only that given, the only best solution in the immediate neighborhood of a point. So identifying and choosing between local and global optima is a critical part of optimization problem solving. So since the optimization prob uh, algorithm is solving, is really working hard to get those optimal values that give you the best output at the end. And we also mentioned continuous and discrete. Uh, I already explained it, but there's a definition here if you need it as well. Now, let's see a sample scenario. Uh, I'm hoping you understand at least the terms, what they mean, and let's see it with an example. So let's try to formulate an integer optimization for driver placement. So there's a logistic company who wants to optimize the placement of its drivers to service a set of delivery location. Each driver has a home-based location and can be assigned to service a subset of delivery locations. The goal is to assign drivers to locations in a way that minimizes the total travel distance while ensuring that all locations are serviced and each driver's workload is within a specified limit. So what we are expecting is to have a minimized total distance, travel distance for the drivers. And we also want the driver's workload not to exist, uh, exceed a specified limit. There's a specified limit to the driver's work workload. So these two are our objective functions. So let's break it down. Problem formulation, let's define the following set parameters. Our set is we have the set of delivery locations and we have a set of drivers in that location. Um, it's the location in the driver's location in their home. And we have parameters. One is the distance between uh, locations between the driver and the required distance they need to go to uh, deliver that particular object, whatever it is. And we have the maximum load that we define for the scenario. There's a maximum overload, so we don't want our drivers to meet, to exceed their, uh, their workload to perform their job. And there's a location of the home base for the drivers. So our decision variables, uh, here we are using integer optimization, right? So here we define decision variables. So if the driver is assigned to a location, it will have one and otherwise it will have zero. So the our decision variables are going to be manipulated between one and zero. So if the driver is calculating the, the limited distance, of course, this constraint will be considered. One is if the location uh, is actually the, 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 the shortest distance and is the driver's workload doesn't exceed the workload limit, we will consider these two constraints. And if those constraints are met, we either give that driver one representation we will test that drivers, uh, whatever calculation we're doing, between one and zero. So either it will be, will be uh, the driver will be assigned to that particular location or not, depending on the if the constraints are made or not. So our objective function is. So our objective function is minimizing the travel distance, the total travel distance. So we are doing a summation. We are doing an, an integer linear right here. Integer optimization. So we are doing a summation of each driver's location with the distance that, as, that's given to them. We are doing here a double summation and a triple summation. So D is a driver. So D is the location of drivers 
that is ing which is longitude latitude and what is uh, ing are the longitude latitude values where else is there and h is a home based location so we will how optimization work is it will try to do the total summation of those each driver's location with their particular uh, location from the home page to the required distance also by multiplying these are the variable distance right the variable which could be either zero or one because we are using discrete values so we will try to differentiate this discrete value between zero and one and see which one actually gives me the minimi the minimi i mean the minimum travel distance that's what we're looking for so each location must be serv uh, serviced by exactly one driver this is another constraint that i gave in this particular scenario uh, and like we said the total over workload for each driver must not exceed the maximum here i gave it a condition so let's say i have a value for the maximum work uh, workload a, a driver can handle so i'm i'm making sure whatever the minimum uh, i mean whatever the calculation I'm doing must not execute uh, the maximum distance. And I also have another country saying one driver must be served exactly. Each location must be served exactly by one driver, not more than that one. And the distribution variables are binary here. They are discrete representation there in one. So this is a simple representation to solve this problem but it will need in practical tools when you use these mathematical algorithms, they will break down this uh, algorithm in deeper until they get the optimal value. So basically, the, basically on the first this equation, when we define this equation for this scenario, let's break it down. So this uh, particular summation, this is a notation of mathematics, right? The summation notation is indicating you that there is a double summation that's going to ha be happen. The parameter, the values that's going to be used are two parameters, D and I. D and I. So we can uh, have an actually have a data for the longitude, latitude, the home based location. So just follow the theory. So here it's actually doing the summation of a double summation for the home location of each driver to the assigned location. And the solver, which is, by solver, I mean here, the optimization algorithm will try to set the decision variables to one for the driver location pairs that minimize the distance. So if the solver get a value that is uh, that minimize the distance when doing the calculation, it will assign it one will give it a one variable since we are using a binary representation and the second term this one represent the total distance travel between the locations assigned to each driver this one solved that problem so the software will try to set the decision variable between both locations to one for the driver location pairs that minimize the distance travel between locations So hope uh, hope that clears us up, but that is a concept behind it. So we are trying to get the minimum distance for those drivers between their location in the required distance they need to go to. And whatever is the location that's actually getting the minimum distance will be assigned to that location. So we are doing here a management strategy. So if I get it by calculating this, locations if i get a minimum distance i will assign this driver to this location if i give it once it means that particular driver is assigned to that particular location so the key points from this scenario is each location must be serviced by exactly one driver that's wanted in the total workload for each driver must not exceed, uh, exceed sorry the maximum value defined Within that visible solution space, the optimization solver will try to find the assignment of drivers. We actually, in this scenario, we are trying to assign drivers to areas to deliver their 
product. So the assignment to the locations that minimize the total distance traveled. So based on which uh, distance is the minimum, so the driver will be assigned to that location. So this means the solver will set the decision variables to one for driver assignment that result in the minimum total distance and zero for other assignments. So if the distance become maximum, the driver will be there. It will not be assigned to that particular location. So what so let's summary for this scenario what we have done. Or the whole process of optimization, you need to have a data preparation, of course, that indicates all the necessary information uh, for this particular scenario. If I actually need to actually implement it using optimization tool and other thing, I need to provide my optimization algorithm, the location values, the distance, I mean, the distance matrix, the maximum workload, the console that I gave, I have to define all of them, the home base location, and like any other process, it needs the data need cleaning and pre-processing, uh, model formulation, translate the problem statement into mathematical formulation, presented above, defining the states and parameters and decision variables, because these are the particular terms that the optimization need to have, and implement the objective of a function and constraint in an optimization software or model. So you have to also, uh, I mean, you the, after you define all these things, you need to uh, go through these algorithms and check uh, if it's actually, uh, if you are actually getting your objective function. So, and the third step would be the optimization using an appro uh, and the appropriate optimization solver or algorithm to find the optimal solution to the integer linear problem. Commonly used solvers for integer linear pro problem, pro programming problems include branch and bound algorithm, cutting plane and branch code algorithm can be used for this purpose for integer linear programming problem. And the fourth step would be solution analysis, that is examine the optimal solution, including the driver location assignment in the travel, travel, travel distance is actually as you expected. Uh, evaluate the solution quality and feasibility. This is the, the evaluation step at the end. Perform sensitive analysis scenario analysis as needed. So you need to be sure it's actually performing as you intended to. Uh, as you expected. And the, fi the final step is the deployment, integrating the optimized driver placement solution into logistic company's operation. Here, I'm just breaking down the step, considering the logistic company for the scenario that I just gave, monitor the performance of the solution and make adjustment as necessary. So if that, that final output that you give to assigning those drivers is not actually working, working it's okay, you will adjust it again, uh, manipulate the parameters until you get the desired in the working, the profitable output at the end. So when we summarize what we talked about so far, uh, the goal of optimization is to find the parameter values that result in the best possible performance or outcome for a given problem. So this can involve techniques such as hyperparameter tuning, feature selection, model selection, all of which aim to improve the model predictive power generalization efficiency. So this is a whole concept behind why you should do optimization is to improve and to, to get your uh, desired outcome. Okay, so the final like, the tutorial presentation is now question time. So is it clear or confusing? Okay, Walker, can you speak up? And um, maybe a little bit 
show, seeing the practical side of things might help us. Uh, yeah, it's is that a question? I'm sorry. The practical side become difficult to see, or uh, no? Maybe on the uh, what do we call the the namings? Probably new things. That's why. Mm -hmm. I don't get one. What uh, the technical the technical jargon? I guess I want to say that. You're saying that is confusing you, or sorry? I, I don't know what to ask actually, but maybe seeing the practical side of it yeah. might help. I'm saying, yeah, that. it definitely have. Here is just conceptual understanding what you should expect when you do optimization on your project or anything. Uh, but the mathematics, the actually the implementing this is not an easy task. It will require a lot of mathematical understanding. It's actually, the one of the documentation here share also a demo, which uh, if you have that guys have the time and try to prefer, you can look up this one. They have similar kind of example with the, similar with the project, and there's a GitHub shared, which include a lot of mathematical algorithms to get the this route for the drivers which you can look up i think they have uh, yeah they definitely they have a github notebook code a lot of mathematics happens uh, it, it is not an easy thing to understand in one tutorial it will require you guys to read a lot and actually practice it please uh, yeah so this presentation have uh, a document or uh, PDF or something that is required from we can where shall we get the more understanding of the, the, the current presentation so I'm going to share the slide if you want that one uh, there is also the references on the document are uh, have a lot of examples in, uh, of understanding this optimization uh, which uh, have you guys seen it the documentation has a lot of information on that one on logistic optimization so try to see all the references on the document but if you need more as well i can provide if the references put on the recommendation are not enough okay um who are confused maybe not clear you can just give a reaction those who are confused job is okay uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I think some of the concepts uh, you, uh, that you were talking about is, I think it's clear, but mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, when it comes to a real world problem, it gets complex. Yes. Uh, so, how can, uh, is there a Python library or something that? Yes, uh, there is uh, branch inbound. All those are the things that I mentioned on the slide are algorithms that do this optimization. You don't have actually do the mathematics hard to code. There are algorithms, and there is also another Python library, Skip, I think. I'm not sure. It also does optimization. So there are definitely tools for optimization you can use. Okay, what is the last one you mentioned? Um, Skippy. It's a Python library. Okay, okay, thank you. So for this on the documentation, you are asked to do integer program uh, optimization. So you need to look for optimization algorithms that focus on integer, since there are a lot of types of optimization as we seen on the tutorial. Okay, so if you don't understand it right away, it's okay. I mean, it's really, need a, a, a bit of mathematics understanding, not a bit, but a hard mathematics understanding. Uh, but with these tools, maybe it might not be that important to understand everything, but you will get it in time. So can I get how many of you got confused or just 
us at least get a, a, a bit of understanding of the concept. Worker. So I'm confused. Thank you, Get Rich of confirming that. What about the list confused thing? Okay. The rest of you are not confused or clear. Okay, let's just forget the practical part. For let's say get out of if you can I mean at least you understand the concept behind optimization. Forget the how you could, will do it on the project. But let's see if you actually understand the concept. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I have it because of understanding the context, but uh, I'm not sure if I can get all the technologies. So, I, mean, uh, I, I will go for reading for more. Yeah, I think it's task four, and maybe all of you doesn't give it a time to read up on. So uh, let's just give this uh, tutorial. I'm going to share the tutorial, read up on it, and search on it. Maybe we can talk about from the stand up tomorrow or <laughs> the next day. I think it's better if you guys just try to look up on it. Maybe that will help. Yeah. Okay. So uh, with no more questions, last question if you have one. Okay. So yeah, we. No. Is that a question, Gedacho? No, no. Uh, me, I, I don't have any message. Okay. So uh, we can end the tutorial. We can talk about this concept on the stand up after you guys research on it. Okay. Thank you for joining in, everyone.